Now, let me introduce you to another concept called singleton. This will be pretty useful for us. So singletons are used to restrict the instantiation of a class to a single object. The reason for this is because there could be a possibility that since we are dealing with the object-oriented programming, you could just keep using new keyword every time you want to use that methods of the class. So you might be instantiating class multiple times even though you might want to do it only once. So that is when singletons are very useful because what singleton has, are going to do is that they, so is they're going to go ahead and check if it's been instantiated once or not. If it is, then it's just going to store its reference, the object reference, and just going to use that reference. It won't keep instantiating it over and over again. Uh, so that is pretty useful. So, so they're useful when only one object is required across the system. You can think of them as like global variables that you can use. It ensures that a single instance that is global point of access. So this is a traditional way of defining and using a class, right? Like you can define a class user and then if I want to instantiate it, you can instantiate it multiple times and use their properties and methods. But in this case, it's creating the object every time, which may not be required. We just may want to use one object and just use its reference. So let's take a look. Now, this is your singleton class. Uh, so we define a class called user. And then to hold the instance of the class, we create a private static variable called instance. And then we create a function called get instance. The job of this function is basically uh, going to check if the class has not been instantiated, it's, if it's not been set, then go ahead and define a new class. Uh, you already know about this property, double underscore class, double underscore, meaning it, it points to the same class, which is user. So think of this as new user. So what this is going to do is, this is going to instantiate uh, this class of here. Uh, inside of this function. So every time a get instance is called, it's going to check if the instance of the class does not already exist. If it doesn't, it's going to go ahead and create a new class with that name. Now, and it's just going to eventually return that in instance of the class. Okay. If it is already set, so you can see that we are holding the instance of the class inside of the instance uh, static variable so that every time you call the function is going to check if it's already been instantiated then it won't actually create a new class and this is pretty useful because all it's doing is just using the reference to that object so now I have a look at the bottom you can see that you've used like three different classes user 1 user 2 and user 3 and then we are using the same function which is get instance and basically although there are three different objects that we have used they are all pointing to the same class object reference okay so this is pretty useful